What happens when four people in the same family have to live each other's lives in order to get along just because some angel gypsy thought they should? You ever wonder why it's always a gypsy woman? It always and she's Romanian? Find out next on Trees in Space. Everyone, welcome. And in case you missed the thumbnail, this week we watched the family comedy, Family Switch. I'm Jason. With me, as always, is Nathan. And we're here to discuss this wonderful, beautiful um, uh, body switch in the auto, or not honor, but in the same genre as like 13 going on 30. Okay. So you said lovely and beautiful. This movie had me all over the emotional. I was on an emotional roller coaster the entire time. I started it. I texted you and I was like, I already hate it. And by the end of it, or by like the middle of it, I was like, okay, yeah, all right, I like this. And then by the end of it, I was like, what the fuck? Are you serious? <laughs> like, come on. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, for those that, you know, we got a little preview right there. And let me tell everyone, basically, the walkers are doing their best to keep their family together and connected. And their teenager kids are pieces of crap. At least they think they are. And so some astrological reader makes them change bodies, not just one for one. It's mother and daughter, father, son, baby and dog. I have no idea why baby and dog are together on this one. And it says, can the walkers unite to land? They're doing the most important things in their lives all at the same time. One needs to land a promotion. One's for a college interview. One is for a record deal. And the other one is a soccer tryout for like this the the country, the, greatest, the national, yes. And this movie was directed by Mick G. I don't know who Mick G is, but that's what it said. Mick G is a great director. I He's done, uh, of course, I'm going to blank on him now. But I know if we wanted to, we could just scroll a list of potential movies he may have done. Somewhere in this little category, I don't know, but Mick G has done some pretty great stuff. Now you know it's Mick G, as in not Mick D, as in McDonald's, right? Yeah, Mick G, as in McGush. I'm gonna tell you my first my issue with this movie. Fur and foremost, okay. the biggest issue I have with this movie. You tell me your first issue with this movie, and then I'll tell you my first issue with this movie. Oh, I'm pretty sure your your is gonna be a, a plethora of uh, just you know things, but was. The timeline, I don't mind the timeline, you know, like, is it one day, two days, three days, and how long the, the planets all line up in a row. They go to school on the 24th of December. Because that's the last day of the, and they're at school. They go through to school the 24th of, no one's in school the 24th of December. No. And, and they, they go were. through two school days. What? They go, and they go through two school days. The two, yeah, so 23rd and 24th of December. They're at school. And well, the 24th maybe is a half a day if you're in some... In what satanic worshipping state is this that you go to school on uh, the 24th of December? California? Oh. Okay, good point. Touche. <laughs> I mean... It's realistic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Though, what's not realistic is these fake-ass parents. These <laughs> parents... Okay, there is... I want the meth coke crack and heroin that those those parents are on it's like i mean but they were just so over the top happy and mm. like how the fuck are these kids so damn talented like come on come on and I don't see Ed Helms playing a laid back, cool dad. He, that's not his part. You know, I thought he did perfectly fine. Well, I, out of everyone else, yes, but I just—he's just not that person. You know, it'd be like having Jason Bateman play that part. I on, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think Jason Bateman's too B level celebrity to play that role. Where you think, you think Jason Bateman is less of a celebrity than Ed Helms? I think Ed Helms is less of a celebrity than Jason Bateman. Okay, well then okay. I we'll think go. Ed Helms is a C level. Oh. Same with Jennifer. 
if you wanted a B-lister, you would have gotten Angelina Jolie to play that role. <laughs> You're, you're right in the scale, but we're going to go with it. I don't get that, but that's great. But I couldn't, like, I couldn't get past the over-exaggeration of this movie with, like, the parents were so upbeat. And, like, come on. What family is that freaking close? Especially with teenagers. And I still don't know which one was the older, was the girl or the boy. I'm thinking the girl was, but I can't be sure. Because the boy's trying to go to Harvard, but he's only like in ninth or 10th grade or something. And and she's trying to do this um, soccer tryout thing. I think she was about a year old, older, maybe. She I was a junior. So. And, and just so people can track what's going on in this movie... Um, the mother changed with the daughter, the, so the mother has to play the soccer, and the yep. daughter has to do a presentation for her the mother's job, which tends to be the big, typical one. And then the father had to ace the interview to go to Harvard. Yale. And, Yale. And the f- son had to play guitar so well with the band Insane. called... Hmm? He had the lead vocal in guitar, lead or front man in the band of... Uh, Something Dad's. Dad to Death. That death to dads. It, it's I, I can't remember the name of the band. Um, t- t- please tell us if you know what the name of the band is. I'm sure we'll, I'm. I'll have it figured out when we when we edit the show. But you can let us know. So that's what has to happen. And the most amazing thing, the fact this teenage boy could sing and play a guitar, good enough for them to get a contract. Yeah, they, they don't show that what he got that talent from. Right. Well, in the fact, again, this family too freaking talented. And how the hell did they get so good? Like so many good things happening to every single one of these people. I like, was going to say, are you first world problem me? issues? This is beyond first world problem. <laughs> I don't even know what universe problem this is. This is in like. It's entitlement so, problems. It's so over the top, unrealistic. Like, even, yeah. at least a Hallmark movie is grounded. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. <clears throat> but I did want to talk, mention one thing. I love the soundtrack to this movie. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember hearing it, but there was a Blink 182 song. That play. I'm not big on Blake 182. So, which song was it? It was in the beginning during the soccer montage. I have backstory to that song. Oh, it was recorded solely for the Kevin and or the K Rock K R O Q, which is home of what Kevin and Bean show used to be on. Mm-hmm. You know, Bean, who interviewed me about our podcast at one time. Oh, I do remember Bean. How's yes. he doing? Uh, good, I guess. He's looking for a radio show over in England. I wish I knew that because, like, we were friendly, but um, I just know that because it's on his Twitter. But um, that song was made for just that Christmas album. They The radio station reached out to him and were like, hey, can you just write a Christmas song for us? And that's the oh. song that they came up with, and it got inserted into this movie. That's very good trivia. I did not know that's... Uh... That's nice. Now, could you brought that up? I hope I forget, don't forget what I was going to say after this. But would you consider this a Christmas movie? Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I would. I okay. So right away, gun to head, yes. Yep, absolutely. It's a Christmas movie. But the more I think about it, I think it's just like a family holiday movie. Because Christmas didn't have to happen for the show to ha- move it to happen. It could happen during any time during the year. So, yeah. Yeah. I it's- still think it's more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard. Now, please listen very carefully. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. But anyways, <laughs> I, just, 
<laughs> I, I will. I'm sorry. I will edit that out. Um, Better not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up with the handshakes? Like, does how does every single person have a? How is everybody so happy in this movie, but so miserable at the exact same time? I, I I'm also trying to figure out why there's one really big classic 1980s bully in that high school who's bullying just that one kid and how he climbs on top of the lockers to be avoided and no one sees him. There's so many unbelievable things about, I know it's supposed to be fun. He's supposed to, you know, you know, well, he does have a white belt with two black stripes. And he almost has his yellow belt, but I can't remember the reason why. Oh, and there were so many little, to me, really creepy type almost scenes. Like, at some point, I thought the two parents, when they were in their kids' bodies, were going to start making out. And at one point, the young lady was going to kiss the son at the party, but the son was, the father was still in the son's body. Yeah. I was like... That's just, you know, weird. Well, what's worse, waking up in bed with your sister or realizing you're young, going to have to touch your dad's penis at some point? <laughs> what are you doing? You're my present this year. The best part of waking up is folders in your cup. See? I smelled it. He's back. Ryan. You have to leave. What? What are you guys talking about? We know what's going on here. We know you're trying to f- each other. What? No. Oh, please. Brothers and sisters, don't look at each other like that. <laughs> uh, I'd sit down. It's I'd still there. Up. You can never unsee it. You ain't got You just... There's no way. You are going to... That 15, 16... No, he's at least 16 because he can drive-ish. I guess he had to scratch his nuts. So, I mean, it's there. He's got to get dressed. I'm sure he took a shower. No, I wouldn't have. Like, and then there was another point. They were going to say goodnight. Dad was in son, but it was dad's son. Mm. So dad's son was getting ready to go to bed with mom, daughter. Right. But mom, daughter said no. So then he, he got excited about going to sleep with sister mom, but sister mom said no. Don't even think about it. But did you see how excited dad's son was to go sleep with sister mom? I, there was too many of that. Too yeah. many of that? Too much of that. The only switch I was perfectly okay with, and w- and I want this part so bad, is dog baby or baby dog. <laughs> well, they did because an okay about job with have, that. If you have dog baby... Right, that dog, that like, you can potty train it. It'd be Brian. You would literally have Brian. You would. But then, if you had baby dog, you just put him then, in an institution. Then the dog, the you know, the human thing, it would sleep all the time. You could just be like, oh, you gotta go outside. Yo, you gotta go outside, and it would That's... understand. It would be the best growing way of ever it'd be the and then switch him later on never i never switch him so you have this 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 human being body with a dog person i would genetically i would breed how would you raise that child you can't let him go to school of course how he's a dog i don't know maybe (laughs) he learns the one that's going to mo- probably struggle the most is the baby dog. <laughs> probably. Because you like, have I... intelligent, you have self-awareness. You, you have. Do, but you get to a certain age, you can just start sticking your little pocket rocket into all these little female dogs all around town and not worry about it. But do you, like, I, I don't oh. know, that whole concept. I, I look, I could fathom this concept for over like 20 minutes right now. Yeah, you went deep thinking about that one, but I mean, I did, I'm not sure if I like to dislike the German neighbor. That was kind of a weird he addition. Seemed awkward. 
Yeah. Like, where was he in the beginning? There in the introduction of that neighbor, it felt like they cut it out. Yeah, because they and, just show him on the side of the uh, road that one time. Now, speaking of cut, I had noticed something in this, and I'm assuming you didn't. There's two cuts in this movie that I wanted to see if you got, and one of them um, was when the van is going to the uh, planetarium, the scene mm-hmm. I just showed you. Did you see the kids on the bikes as the van was going forward? I saw the kids on the bikes at the planetarium. Right. That's what I'm saying, at the planetarium. Yeah. So the car's pulling in. There's You see the bikes in front of the, car, the van, and then the van pulls around the corner or pu- blocks it, and then the car- girls move left. One of them is missing. Hmm. I think it was just an optical illusion. But I'll show you again after this. You ain't got to show him again. I'm sure I'll see it when you send me the clip. True. <laughs> and then when dad, son, son, dad, dad, yeah. son, whichever, goes into the Yale interview, he when he sits down, the back of the chair is in front of him, but then the and next then they time show from back show, here, the back of the chair is behind him. Exactly. Yeah. When that happened, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it happened off camera because you know they're not showing them, so it's happening while we're not in the room. And you know they do that sometimes. Sometimes I say it's a mess, mistake, and sometimes it's like, well, it didn't I stay just think that way. Bad cut. It was not the it was not the greatest movie, and uh, I didn't mind it for mindless fun. It did not need to be as long as it was. An hour no, and thirty minutes was fine. And can anybody just walk into a planetarium whenever they want? And the maintenance people magically know how to put together a multi-million dollar piece of uh, set, you know, telescopic yeah. technology. And why do you have to have a telescope that looks at the alignment of the planets in order for this to work? Apparently, you just need the, the damn gyp- gyny, gypsy, gypsy woman. All you need is a gypsy, and she just happens yeah. to be there. And who is she to interfere with their lives? You're telling me there are not other people out there that have more... Pressing issues in their life, they need to switch with somebody to make them understand how good they have it. Well, yeah, exactly. This family already has so much freaking going for them. Mm -hmm. And now this woman comes in here and is like, oh, hey, I'm going to make your, you guys need to learn to love each other more and support each other for all these big things. Right. It's, it's, you kidding me? Right. And and the thing is, it's, it's like Freaky Friday more than anything because 13 and going on 30 was just someone who got older, stayed in the same body. This movie should have been called Creepy Friday. It just <laughs> because it was just creepy, creepy, creepy all over the place. There's four people who have four issues. Uh, Chick got the scholarship. I mean, got to go play because they said, you know what? Yes, we know you can win, but the compassion you showed, we went to the team. Great. The Yale person said, hey, you're not prepared yet to come to Yale. Cool. The father got the recording contract. But hold on. Son, what? Son gets the girl. Son gets the girl, yeah, because he gets. So he eaten still has it. something good come right. to him. But we don't know if the mother loses her job. We no, she, she got the promotion. She got the promotion. It said at the end of the movie. Where? Um, at the concert at the very end, the assistant. Yeah, no, the assistant brings the guy in, the uh, manager guy there. He's like, oh, "I had to tell you in person. Uh, we accepted your terms and all that." And then the bald owner or uh, um, member mm-hmm. partner walks in and says, "Congratulations, partner!" But he's like, "You're fired." And he's like, "Oh." And then, yeah, so she got pr- the promotion. So she got made partner. The girl, the daughter, Cece, got to go play for the national or try out for the national team. Yeah, I guess it must have been one part where I skipped 15 seconds ahead because I was like, let's get to the end of this. I must have skipped right over that 15 seconds of bullshit. It was a key piece of bullshit. We go to Rotten Tomatoes, and as you probably figured, Rotten Tomatoes scored this movie masterpiece at 44%. The audience, which is us and you, scored this at 47%. So we're nicer to uh, films than they are. Do do you think that that's adequate? Do you think that's a correct ranking, or would you go lower or higher? Um, You know, if... 
what do you think? What what do you, what's the over under on this? Do you think <laughs> it's over or under on this? I think both those are high. I think forty percent is a good solid is is the ceiling for the rating of this movie. I don't know. I'm about to probably shock your world with my rating of this movie. Uh oh. Okay, well we'll figure that out once at the end yeah. of this whole thing. Um, five star reviews. The first one is from CB. I loved it. Funny and great family movie to watch with the kids at Christmas. The kids need to know just how hard us adults have it. That's hey, a selfish reason. But you know what? It was a great message. I absolutely adored that aspect of it. The kids just failing. I loved how the dad was just crushing. So let me go ahead and share this one star review or less. Christian K, you can foreshadow a clinched body, cliched Cliché, body swap movie in ways that you don't involve be bludgeoning the viewer over the head with it. Awful. Um, I'm almost agreeing with that. And you mentioned that because like we were talking about the one bully in this classroom. I mean, at the very end of the concert, goes, I'm sorry, I was wrong. It's like, I love you. Why was he in this concert? I mean, why was, why was he there? Anyways, so now we have the next five-star review. Wizards of Shady Nook S. A return to the family, to the feel-good comedies of the 1980s and 90s. Something here for the whole family. It's predictable, sure. But I haven't seen a new movie plot this century, so no biggie. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> five stars. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> I get this movie. Five stars. Superstar. Oh, I love it. You know, Oliver H with his review says, "Was this AI generated? Uh, the movie, the pl- or the the script? Because I believe an AI wrote this movie." That's what I think he's asking or saying because, you know, it probably was. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. It was by the numbers, you know, regular things. So they said, hey, swap families, what would you do? And then, which would make sense why they didn't understand that on the 24th of Christmas, I mean, in December, you don't go to school. So that's right. where that came into it. They also don't understand realistically how people's lives are, teenagers' lives are. That's the reason it was not done correctly so ai could have done this yeah oh absolutely um ryan g pretty much exactly what i expected from this kind of movie was fun to watch with our family and we have plenty of laughs and all the shenanigans going on yeah alicia says i love ed i clicked on the film he was in but oh my god Rarely do I stop a film to reconsider my existential choices. It's so bad that it made me question eating pizza forever. Maybe it's a good thing, but Ed, please, you're better than that. I've never once seen a movie where I question my existential choices. (laughs) uh, That's a pretty bad review. It is, and I also don't understand why they, the dog was at the planetarium to begin with. Like, I understand from the perspective of, like, well, the dad and the son and the mom and the daughter, mm-hmm. but we had the baby. Oh, let's get a dog. Yeah. No. So the wow, that's funny um, uh, remark comes from that O. Why? What? Who? When? Where? That sounds like something Nate would say. I thought the plot was very easy to follow. Did you? I did. <laughs> so there ain't no, ain't no why involved in that. You know the plot, so the why. I know, I know why it happened. I know what happened. I know mm-hmm. who it happened to. I was unaware of the and when. You know when. But you told me the when. You know when. And now I'm apparently confused on the where because I thought they were already in California. And they won a recording contract in California. California. That's so where the hell do they live? Seattle, is what I'm going to guess. No clue. Colorado. But there's palm trees and shit. Florida? 
Maybe they are from Florida. And, it, from and Florida. I'm guessing it doesn't snow, but I'm they guessing. had a miracle snowstorm that was it, it, completely CGI. Okay, so palm trees, no snow. Um, going to California. It is in California. Uh, t- Hawaii? I. There's no way that was Hawaii. No. See? Where the mm. hell? We don't know where. There's palm trees in a lot of like states, though. Um, so I will move on to my uh, ratings of this movie. It was enjoyable. I thought it was a little too long. I thought it was kind of a plastic script. I think the actors did the best they could with what they had. I thought the boy was okay. I thought the daughter was great. The girl that played the daughter, she did both parts well. I thought, I thought the actor was fine. There's nothing bad about this movie. There's nothing overly great about this movie. Um, so I'm going to give it, uh, well, I'll, I'll give, I'm getting a little bit less critique-ish on these movies over the last couple of weeks because of some stuff we've seen. So I'm going to give it two trees. All right. Well, here we go. Here's where I get you. Uh, I, I hated it. I loved it. I hated it. And then I loved to hate it. And I hated to love it. Uh, This movie made me laugh at times where I did not expect to laugh at all. You don't laugh a lot at most movies. That's great. I don't laugh at most things, period. I know. Which I love comedy. So this movie made me laugh. Um, Maybe it was the headspace I was in that allowed me to open up and laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, but for what this movie was, it was a cute family, like, let's learn a lesson type of thing. Like, hey, I have teenagers. I'm going to go ahead and show this movie to my teenager in hopes that they get some perspective of what adult life is. And we're going to have a cute joke and Josh about it. So because I know, Josh. I know a joke. Um, so because of how this campy type of movie was set up and i thought that all of the actors were at, they did beautifully i am going to say for a family comedy movie four trees oh my god oh my god okay i would I totally don't... watch this again i i thought it was awful i'm Ashamed that I loved this movie so much. I would recommend this movie. To You're gonna somebody. watch it with Amanda and Brody at some point in time. I would consider, it, yeah. That's that's a. Hey, this is why we do this show, everyone, for you all to see how <laughs> me and Nate disagreed and all. And we've agreed a couple times, but more times than not, we disagreed. And seldom do we disagree to a point where it's two to four trees. Oh Maybe yeah, by, by one half a step or something. But this is. But this is what it is. He was in a good mood watching this. I was, I don't know, fighting the Battle of the Crabs. I don't know. But <laughs> I was, apparently wasn't in a great mood watching this. But either way, we hope you enjoyed watching us tell you about uh, Family Switch. Yes. And if you did, please like, subscribe, comment. As Nate says, tell your mother, tell your brother, tell your friend, tell your dog, tell your hog. Tell the guy that's spying on you right now from your window. And um, <laughs> and please uh, remember, every Monday we drop a brand new show. Sorry, a brand new yep. episode here yes. on YouTube so you can watch and listen to us. Have a great day. <laughs>